so to, so to solve any continuous beams in earlier classes, we'll learn how to solve continuous beams. That is by solving moment distribution method and slope deflection method and Canis method. So here we use moment distribution method to solve influence line diagrams of continuous beams. So in this regard, uh, we are, we, uh, we'll solve first empirical equation and then we'll go with an example problem. Okay, first one, uh, let A, B, C be a continuous beam and assume a unit load moving from support A to B and then to C okay and at some instance let the unit load be at a distance of x from support A and L minus x from support B given both the spans are of equal lengths here you can see in the uh, diagram that both the spans are of equal lengths and at uh, some instance that is at some instance uh, uh, the unit load is present at a distance of x from support A and L minus x from support B and you can also see the span of the uh, second uh, second span is also L here. In order to solve this continuous beam, initially we need to solve the empirical equations for RA, RV and RC and bending moment at supports. Okay. And as learnt in earlier classes, the only way the only way we can calculate the reactions and bending moment of any continuous beam is by using moment distribution method, slope deflection method, and Canis method, etc. Okay. And the first method being moment distribution method. So here in this case, let us consider MDM method to solve the continuous beam. Okay. And the questions in these kind uh, questions from these uh, uh, type of problems are asked in this manner. That is solve the continuous beam and draw the influence line diagram for continuous beam uh, 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 he'll not ask us to determine the total reactions RA, RB, RC and bending moment he'll ask any of the R, either RA or RB or RC but not everything ok anyways we'll see that example problem later now here uh, here we shall uh, solve a similar problem uh, solve the continuous beam using MDM method now coming to moment distribution method, as we all know that the first part of the moment distribution method deals with the solving the uh, fixed end movements and then with distribution factors. So here we see, uh, uh, we discussed, as we discussed um, continuous beam ABC here, okay, so the uh, right, ABC is a continuous beam where AB, BC equal to AB and BC are equal to span L. Okay, where unit load is present at a distance of x from uh, support A and L minus x from support B. Okay, and the fixed end movements are here. Okay, if a, if a simply supported beam or if a fixed beam carries uh, uh, some concentrated load W at a distance of A and A from left support and B from right support, then the fixed end movements are W A B square by L square and W A square B by L square. So using these fixed end formulas, uh, I've uh, written uh, these uh, values of fixed end moment that is minus x minus x into as, as this is anti-clockwise moment I'm writing here minus and this is clockwise moment I'm writing here plus minus x into l minus x whole square by l square and l minus x into x square by l square and since in BC span since there is no load the fixed end moments are obviously zeros. And coming to distribution factors of uh, for A, B, C beam, I'm considering joint B. Since the common joint for in the continuous in the given continuous beam is only B, so I will I will only have B here. So B is uh, uh, B is having two members B A and B C, and the stiffness values are T E I by 4 L because A and C are simple supports. So if uh, if the far end is simple, then the uh, relative stiffness uh, for that member is 3 E I by 4 L. We have as we have done in many problems 3 E I by 4 L and 3 E I by 4 L. So the total relative stiffness is 3 E I by 2 L. Solving these two, and distribution factors are. Uh, stiffness of the particular member divided by total relative stiffness that is 1 by 2 and similarly the second uh, member BC also is 1 by 2. Now movement distribution method of beam with respect to the above distribution factors are solved here. Um, solving A, B, C joint member A, B, B, A, B, C, C, B distribution factors are only written for common joints that is half here, half here with, there is no distribution factor here because we have only one joint at one particular member okay and next fixed end movements are minus as we have done in the earlier uh, uh, as we have done solved earlier that is minus x into l l minus x whole square by l square and so on here i'm writing the same fixed end movements here as there is no load here these fixed end movements are 
And remember here, in the given continuous beams, the extreme ends are simple supports. So, in moment distribution method, if the simple support, if the extreme ends are simple supports, then the uh, very next step after after writing fixed end moments is the balancing. Is the balancing. So, because there there should not be any moment at a simple supports, we should directly uh, make that value zero by putting an opposite. Moment that is minus x into l minus x whole square by l square. So I am writing. So I am adding that moment with plus x into l minus x by l square. Okay, this is how balancing is done and carryover moment. So uh, since I have created an unknown moment, I have established an unknown moment uh, to make the uh, sim uh, moment at simple support zero. I have to carry half of the moment here. That is. X into L minus X whole square into divided by 2 L square. Sorry, and we have no carryovers here because it is already zero. And again, calculating the initial moment. Again, that is returning to the first step of the moment. As an iterate, iterate as part of an iterative process, I am again coming to the initial portion. So the summation of these two values is zero, and summation of these values is x into this is remember this is x I mean new uh, x square into l minus x divided by l square and this is x into l min l square minus x square by 2l square the summation of oh, sorry this is x square into l minus x by l square and and uh, plus x into l minus x whole square by 2l square and here we have uh, I have solved this summation here you can see you can see the solving you can see here the solving procedure the summation of this one, the summation of these two is x into l square minus x square by 2 l square. I have written this value here directly, and we don't have anything here, so these are directly again zeros. And now, as we have returned to the initial moments and all the uh, extreme sub extreme conditions that is, simple support should have moment zero, that condition is satisfied. I'm starting with distribution moments. So, the difference at the joint B is not zero. That is the difference of these two moments is not zero. So, I am distributing these moments with respect to the distribution factors here. That is distribution factor into the difference and should be in a opposite direction. That is this is plus. So, this is clockwise moment. So, I am creating anti-clockwise distribution moment of half. That is because um, I have to multiply the difference of the movement with the distribution factor in the opposite direction. So, this is plus and this is minus and multiplying with the half. This gives minus x into l square minus x square divided by 4 l square and this is also the same because the distribution factor is also the same here. And coming to carry over moments, because, because I have established another assumed to distributed moments, I have to carry these moments. And remember, to carry these moments, if we carry the distributed moment to this extreme simple support, then again the moment at the simple support again becomes non-zero value. So, and we have a rule. We have we we also have a rule that carryover should not be done to the simple support because it will again become a non-zero value. So no carryover moment for simple support. And here is also it is applicable. No carryover moment to simple support. So again after distribution, I am again summing uh, summing up this initial moments value and distributed moments value. And remember, I am not I am doing nothing here. I am just adding the things up and solving the moment distribution method problem. So summing up these two values it is x into l square minus x square by l square and this is the exactly negative magnitude. So the summation is zero and hence the problem is concluded and the final moments are zero, zero and the magnitude of this moment is x into l square minus x square by l square. Now that I got all the moments, now, the, now that I got all the final moments I am now solving the reactions. Now, after determining all the moments, now I am going to determine the reactions of the continuous B. Okay, and uh, taking RA, RB, R RC as the reactions, and I am assuming one kilonewton load at a distance of x from left support and L minus x from right support. The final moments are MB equal to MAB equal to zero, MBA equal to as salt, MBZ as determined, MCB is again zero. Okay, uh, to determine the reactions, I have to solve this. MB, MB, uh, sigma MB equal to 0. If I solve sigma MB equal to 0, I will get RA and this is RE. If I solve similarly for BC span and sigma same sigma MBC is equal, MB equal to 0, then I will get RC. 
and now that I got out of the three unknowns, out of the three reactions R A, R B and R C, I have got R A and R C to get R B. I am just using sigma V equal to zero simple equilibrium equation. That is R B equal R A plus R B plus R C should be equal to the sum of all summation of all downward forces should be equal to summation of all upward forces. That is R A plus R B plus R C is equal to one. So R B equal to one minus R A minus R C and R B is equal to this one. Now that I got all the moments. And uh, all the reactions. I'm just. I uh, now uh, the only leftover thing is we need to determine the uh, moments or reactions at any given position. So x is equal to some value, and these are R A, R B, and R C. Similarly, we can also write for M A, or M B, or M C with variation in x value. Okay. Similarly, now I'll substitute x is equal to 0.25 x, 0.3 x, or 0.5 x, or 0.75 x, or Uh, 0.8x or 0.9x and similarly up to x equal to l. So if I go on changing this x values here, I'll go on changing this R A, R B and R C. So after getting all these values and if I plot them here, so I'll get R A is equal to this one. That is R A. Since the assumed load is present in A B span, so A B span. Uh, uh, since it is present in A B span, reaction R A will always be maximum. And this value is always one, and R B will go to zero. R B will go to zero, and this is again R C again goes to zero. This is for R A. Now, if we assume that R uh, the unit load is present in span B C, then it will be the reverse of this equation. That is, here will R C will be maximum, and again R B will be zero, and again R A is equal to zero. If we assume that the unit load is exactly present at the uh, R B support uh, support B, then the inclined plane diagram is this one. Now this is how we solve this inclined plane diagram for continuous beam. Now uh, as part of this, I have solved some example problem here. So the example problem is here. The the question is asked in this manner: Draw inclined plane diagram for the reaction at A. Showing the ordinates at one meter interval for the two span continuous beam. This is asked for 10 marks in general. Okay, the question is this one. That is, we have a continuous beam of uh, equal spans. That is, it is carrying 30 kilo newton at uh, one meter from left support and three meter from support B. Okay, for two span uh, equal length continuous beam, distribution uh, the distribution factor uh, is always one by two, as uh, you can. Uh, It is obtained from the earlier uh, example, okay. And distribution moments are as done in the earlier problem. Distribution moments are done in the earlier problem, okay. And the moments are in the final moments are concluded to this value, okay. And similarly, R A, R B, and R C values are uh, determined. And here, in the as in the question, only. He is asking us to determine the reaction at R A. We are not bothered about what means, what might be R C and what might be R A. So we'll only consider that the load is present in A B span and B C span, and we'll only determine R A value. So if the load is present in A B span, then M sigma if we if we take sigma M B equal to zero, then R A into four and plus X into this value and minus the, here we have unit load. So four minus here one kilonewton into four minus x. So giving leaving leaving us with R A equal to this value. And similarly, and this reaction is only valid if the unit load is present in span A B. And what if the load is present in B C? And he is still asking us to determine the reaction R A. Reaction R A when load is present in B C. And remember, we can uh, use a simple logic here. For example, if the load is present in A B, and if we determine R C, then this R C uh, will logically be equal to the condition where the load is present in B C. Load B C lo load unna puru R A M out thunda. A B lo load unna puru R C kora adhe out thunda. So now, if we calculate literally, that is with, from the same example, if I calculate R C. Then this R C will be equal to R A when the load is present in A B. Sorry, B C. A B lo load unna puru R C antho thundu. B C lo load unna puru R A antho thundu. So if the load is in B C, then R C 
in first case will be equal to RA in second case that is given in the example. If we assume that unit load is in BC then RA equal to RC when the unit load is in AB. So given that this is in this is for this is when unit load is in AB and this is unit load in BC and we have here so these are the values that is how to determine the reaction RA that is the unit load concentrated load is multiplied with the ordinate of the in the hand diagram 0.6914 that is x I am changing the x values and I am getting the r values I keep on changing x value I will get different values for RA different values for RA so if I multiply 30 kilo Newton value with the ordinate of the influence land diagram then I will get the final answer. So this is generally asked for 10 mass question. Thank you.